Hello, and welcome back to the Gfinity Elite Series presented by Alienware. Kevin, do you have a prediction on the first match and how it's going to go? Oh, we're going straight into predictions. Yeah, well, why not? Straight in. I like it. Yeah, um, so, this is going to be maybe a little bit controversial to uh -huh. people, but uh -huh. I believe Brisbane Deceptors will be able to sneak a victory today. So, really? I'm going to go for the underdog straight out, and why not? Let's live it up a little bit. Yeah, okay. Who on the Brisbane Deceptors are the crucial players for you that are going to make that happen? 100%. It's up to Matt CD to make the impact. He has always been the player to either miss a lot of easy frags or the one just hit insane shots mm -hmm. and just win the game for his team. So, it depends which version comes up today. And so, uh, just again, for me, who's still learning, um, uh, like, uh, there are obviously very different roles of the players play, right? Like, and that's all decided beforehand, uh, yeah? Generally so. Yeah. Generally, a team does talk through because when we... This does go back to the money a little bit yeah, in sure. terms of how we're talking about the economy because there is one position in the team known as the sniper, right? Okay. So the person who picks up the most expensive or one of the most expensive weapons in the game. Mm -hmm. And so to pick up that weapon, you do need to be considering your economy a little bit and accounting for it. And that player is given a lot of responsibility a lot of, a lot of the time. They're going up against the, the opponent's marksman. Mm -hmm. They're the one that occasionally roams around the map to try to take control of the map off the enemy team. And they're the ones that you look to be hitting sick frags, the ones that you look in videos afterwards and go, whoa, that's amazing. So they're the ones to look forward to. Awesome, awesome. Well, I think we're ready to go. That's enough chat right now. We're going to hand over to our casters, get this started. Over to you, Mac and Jim. Let's do it. Thank you very much, Luke and Kevin. Guys, Welcome to the Elite Series. It is going to be a fantastic match. Brisbane Deceptors, as, a, as we said, up against Melbourne Order. Bold prediction, Kevin. Also a bold strategy. Attacking me in the early pieces, but we'll see. It's a long series, mate. <laughs> we'll get there. Mac. Hello. First impressions of these two teams. Now, this is the first time that we've seen the Brisbane Deceptors line up in full at land. And, of course, this Melbourne Order iteration as well. Interesting composure. Yeah, they're looking... Well, you know, Yeti Bacon came out quite confident. You know, he's got a big head too, and that means he's probably got a big brain. Um, so I believe, you know, I think, I think the Deceptors are going to take it. I'm going to go with Kevin on that one. Now, look, uh, obviously it's a very important match because it is a best of one. It's also the opening match of the series as well. A real chance for these teams to try and define their season. Now, as they go through the preparation phase, um, obviously they've conducted the veto phase. Now, the veto in a best of one is super important. So, I mean... These two teams, obviously, coming into this particular matchup, very, very safe. I dare say they're going to play it. They're probably going to look to maybe eliminate some of those custom maps. The team composition, the team chemistry um, are all going to be crucial in that. But, I mean, looking at uh, the veto as it actually comes out, I dare say we're on the money that with Inferno actually being the, the one to be picked. Are you surprised to see that at all? A um, little bit surprised. I thought they would have sort of tried to go for the Cache or Mirage sort of play. But, it, you know, Inferno, it's going to be a fun game to watch. It is going to be a fun game to watch. Now, obviously, in the, um, the pieces that we had earlier, um, now I'm waiting for all those Twitch chat memes to um, come through, but <laughs> look, the economy is super important, particularly on a map like Inferno, because a map like Inferno, if you haven't actually seen it, is a very, very um, choke-heavy um, map. And when I say choke-heavy, it's actually got a lot of key choke points in the map which the teams will be looking to control. Now, having utility at your disposal to be able to do that is super important, super yep. important. So managing their money from the get-go is going to be very, very key for them. Now, um, do you feel as though maybe um, that might be something, maybe an issue for some of these teams that obviously are without their starting rosters? No, nah, I think as long as the teams start to prioritise a little bit of utility early on, it may be able to get them around the map, you know, a little bit more safely and uh, yeah, I feel like... Now, Banana here. This is one of the most key areas on the map on Inferno because a lot of the control from the CT side is information-based. If they have control of that area, they can obviously successfully defend the B-bomb site, but where else can they go? There's only two bomb sites on this map, so they can only go to that, uh, that A-bomb site. So look for that to be a key contest area. Obviously, we have the A-bomb site here. It's much more open. It's much more easy for the T side to actually try and attack. But the CT side, by the same token, it's a little bit easier for them to defend as well. So so uh, obviously we have the crowd firing up here, we have the players firing up as well. But look, coming into this matchup, are there any key players for you uh, on either of these sides to look at? Um, you know, I definitely think I want to see Bartowski. I want to see him going crazy. The man, the young gun, he's an up-and-comer. I know it's his first time on a big stage. And, uh, you know, I'm back in the... Uh, the boy that wants to be a police officer one day. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. First, first order for him, though, is to actually enforce something on this map. So for him, it's going to be very, very uh, key for him to assert himself. Obviously, as we said, first match 
of the Elite Series. It's a, a very relatively quick fire season. Obviously, five weeks, you play each team once, but you want to assert yourselves early on. So in that regard, um, these guys are going to be looking to, um, I guess, play very, very aggressive, particularly on a map like Inferno. It, it basically lends itself to aggression like that. But I believe we're gonna, uh, ready to get underway here in the uh, first match of the Elite Series. So uh, these players obviously making final preparations here now. Um, Mac. Obviously, your first time on the stage here. It's fantastic, mate. It looks fantastic. You look fantastic. Oh, thanks, mate. You know, and uh, hopefully, we can, uh, <laughs> hopefully we can back that up with some fantastic commentary, guys. But uh, give some, uh, I guess, a round of applause for our teams. Make some noise, guys. It's going to be fantastic <laughs> as uh, we look to get things underway. Now, Melbourne Order have actually won the knife round, so they've got their choice of uh, sides. Not surprised to see them on the CT side. Obviously, a very, very uh, key decision there for them. Yeah, you know, the CT side on Inferno in recent time hasn't been as strong as what we see people playing on the T side, but considering it is kind of a pug environment, it may actually favour the CTs in this one. Obviously, the pistol round, as we said, everybody starts on equal playing as uh, Brisbane Deceptors there, not on the T side. They have a very interesting loadout, actually. A lot of strategy going to be revolving around this one. Look at the utility um, on some of the players there, Gots and Connie. Look to them to actually open things up in this round, but... Early on in the piece, a lot of aggression here. Yeah, they're going quite quickly up. Banana here making a bit of noise at the top. We do see Sonic here trying to hold. He takes a little bit of damage, but not too much. JD going to be taken down first. Sonic picking up the triple, but Yeti going to be getting that trade. We are left in a 2v3 situation. Raz, Mizu and Bart looking to go for the retake, retake Sorry, as the bomb goes down. Yeti and Gods holding together. Going to be looking to hold Con here. Waiting. Raz boosted up. In the garden bed, gonna whiff those shots, but Gots gets the info. We do see Yeti Bakey falling. Umizu and Bart gonna get one on the retake there. Gots falling there, and we are gonna see Melbourne Order picking up the pistol round. The first pistol round of the Elite Series, as we said. So uh, these guys obviously um, come away with that victory. But now, this is where it gets tough. On a map like Inferno, obviously uh, taking control of those choke points, they're gonna need to obviously balance. Um, those weapons with the need for utility as well, but it looks like they're actually opting for a bit more of a, uh, a safe buy in some instances. They've got a, a good composition of rifles and, of course, those SMGs. Now, Kevin spoke about it on the desk. Those uh, rifles um, obviously don't have as much of a kill bonus or a, uh, a frag bonus as the um, SMGs, but early on, look at that. Straight up aggression. Deceptors, they need to be uh, very, very careful. They're, at this point in time, being trained. To, uh, to play more defensively, sit back and obviously wait out the aggression from the CT side. Now what that does, that burns a lot of time. And obviously with a minute 55 round timer, time is something you don't always necessarily have. No, definitely not. And just going back to the weapons, it is a very smart decision for Order to pick up three SMGs here. As Brisbane Deceptors, none of them have that body armor. So SMGs, you know, they don't have great armor penetration. So against the terrorists, without the armor there, they will do a ton more damage and the T should fall quite quickly. It's an easy way to pick up, you know, boost the economy. Get some money in the bank. We are going to see Raz trying to hold from Cubby. He'll get one onto Gots, but Matt CD with the CZ. The $500 pistol, quite overpowered in the uh, recent times. We are left in a 4v4 situation. JD with m 7 Oh, no. Look at this Yeti going to be making the play, jumping down off the balcony, but Bart... Going to be finding JD as well. Bart falling. Trade coming out from Matt CD. As you said, he is going to be putting in some hard yards here for the Deceptors. But Nikes with the M4 going to be finding one as the smoke pops. Matt CD tapping the bomb. He's going to stick it. CT's not able to deny that plant. Now on the 1v2, Matt CD, if anyone can do it, it's this man. And with oh, the UMP, no. that aim punch there coming in, stopping the spray. A little bit of a cheeky USP shot there. Yeah, look, that was a good round for Brisbane Deceptors. They obviously uh, got quite far with not a, uh, a lot in the tank. But more importantly, Matt City getting that plant means that their money is going to keep rolling on. They're going to keep building that economy, and that's something that they need. As obviously here, uh, we do see them now with those rifles, that preferred weaponry. The AKs, obviously a full loadout of utility as well. They did a good job of also thinning the coffers of Melbourne Order. So you can see that whilst they do still have rifles, they uh, very much uh, are uh, on the verge there. If they do lose this round, obviously that money bonus that they've been earning um, will reset to the minimum. So looking for that to occur. Brisbane Deceptors looking to take control here, but look at that strategy coming out from Melbourne Order. That aggression has been punished, and this is exactly what you don't want to happen. 
for uh, Melbourne Order. They've gone too aggressive, but they do find one frag. Mizu can't find the second. He goes down. He's back to a four versus three. Now, this is a lot of map for three CTs to cover. You can see they're very heavily concentrated over towards that B bomb site, but this is uh, all on Sonic's information play here. So he's got banana. He's got banana control, as I was saying before in the, the pregame. Super important for them as uh, it allows his teammates to rotate back to the A bomb site. But I don't know if he's going to get there in time. Oh, pop flash coming out from Nikes here. He whiffs the spray, though. On the fully blind terrace, Yeti Bacon going to save his teammate there and Raz now solo on the A site as we do see Sonic rotating in quite slowly. But he does get there after the bomb goes down. Still looking to face though, Yeti ready for that one. Tapping the head, Raz goes down, now Sonic in a 1v4. Probably not going to be going for this round. He might just try to buff that economy, get a few frags, take some guns out of the Deceptor's hands. Don't know if he's going to be able to do it though, that's the thing. He's obviously searching around, seeing if he can take something out of the economy, but there's nothing on offer for him. Well played by the Brisbane Deceptors. They find their first round here. And most, more importantly, as we said, this is what uh, Melbourne Order didn't want to happen. They didn't want to have their economy reset because they've obviously spent a lot of money getting this weaponry. So for them, it's a case of uh, going back to the drawing board and seeing what they can do in, do in the next round. Most importantly though, Sonic keeps his weapon. Well, actually, look at that. Deceptors keeping four weapons after that round. Only one of them falling. That's going to be extremely good for the bank there. And, uh, of course, as we see there on the uh, score sheet, Yeti Bacon really uh, tearing away here. He's going to be a key player for Brisbane Deceptors, not only because he is a Brizzy boy, but also because uh, I guess he's one of those players that uh, carries a lot of emotion when he plays, and that's a good thing for a team to ride when they're on that high. Obviously, it has maybe some detractors when uh, things aren't going so well, but for the moment... They've uh, definitely got the momentum going in their favour. Yes, yeah, so, start of the fourth round. Clock ticking down slowly. Gots going to be working at the bottom of Banana, waiting for some aggression to come out from order, but they're going to be playing quite pl passive back on the B side. Bit of a crossfire one of the top of Banana, but nothing too crazy there. Order as well. Still holding. Bracket. One over at Archers, one over at Dig, and one up on the balcony there. Now, as I was saying before, the weaponry of Melbourne Audi here is not fantastic. So you might see um, Brisbane Deceptors in, in the early phases anyway. They were trying to bait some utility out. It hasn't quite worked to effect. They didn't really um, do an effective job of it. But the utility on Melbourne Audi is very, very limited. So their ability to actually slow things down like rushes and pushes is going to be very heavily affected by that. So Mizu here now comes in contact, finds the first frag. That's a good one for Melbourne Audi as the... Uh, Youngster in JD does go down and it's back to a four versus five situation. And there's a lot of numbers here from Melbourne Order over towards that B bomb site. And that B player is actually very, very defensive. So this could actually work against Melbourne Order if they decide to fall back. But for the moment, Brisbane Deceptors are knocking on A's door. They do find two, but Towski with that CZ, please get that out of here. <laughs> and it's just Matt CD who can't do too much. Melbourne Order so far in this tug of war are up and the reverse happens to the T side. They didn't get that, uh, that bomb down, so that doesn't mean they get that extra money bonus from that. They're back onto pistols. And uh, look, as uh, I guess the scales continue to balance here early in this match, the experience of Melbourne Order just starting to uh, uh, ride away. It's important, though, the, for Brisbane Deceptors, they don't let that get into their heads. They don't fall into that mentality of uh, we're falling behind here. It is still a close game. It is still very early on. And as we said, that money system in the game allows teams who are losing heavily to get back into it. Yeah, and if, you, uh, if we go back to the last round, what we did see was a bit of a gamble coming out from order. They had four over towards the A site, that one person holding solo on the B site, passive as anything. And uh, we did see Raz actually, he was playing Moto, looking over towards apartments, but he had his archers covered by, who was it? I think it was Mizu. Now this is interesting, Mac, because ought to have actually called a tactical timeout here. Ooh. So, obviously wanting to get something right in terms of what they're doing um, for the team, but it is a, is a very different, um, I guess, strategy to call a tactical timeout like that. <laughs> so, in terms of um, what they're able to do in this round, I don't know whether it's just the fact that they actually need to shore things up. Winning anti-eco rounds in Australia, as we know uh, from watching the scene, is not the easiest thing to do. So, um told there's a technical issue on the back of a tactical pause. Okay. So I don't know at which point you can stop talking because there's obviously, with the technical pause, it's a little bit different. Teams actually aren't allowed to communicate within that. With the tactical pause, they are. Okay. Because the tact we can't make a tactical pause without 
talking, right? Yeah. But uh, obviously, you see Connie there as well. So Brisbane Deceptors um, are looking to get themselves back into this match. They would have used uh, potentially that tactical timeout to uh, also reset themselves um, as well. But look, any any standouts for you so far for either of these teams? I mean, looking at the scoreboard, it's pretty easy to see uh, who's standing out in terms of stats. But who's who's maybe got a bit of an understated role in this instance for you? Well, you know, once again, I'm going to go back to Yeti Bacon. He is, you know, a bit underrated coming out today. He, you know, talks the talk. He's got a great so name. He does. Yeti Bacon. It doesn't really, you know, make a lot of sense. The two things don't really go together too well. I actually wonder if we can find out later what, how he got to that. How did he get to Yeti Bacon out of all the alias choices in the world? How do you get to, uh, how do you arrive at Yeti Bacon? Well, he looks like a hairy boy. <laughs> 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 so that could be. <laughs> uh, looks like we're about to get back underway. Thankfully, uh, the bus that you just threw him under is, uh, is departing. But look, Melbourne Order in this particular instance are going to be getting themselves um, G'd up for this. They're going to be firing up. As we said, it's a completely different arena for these guys, completely different environment. So for them to not just adapt to the environment, but also adapt to what's happening in game is super difficult at the best of times and obviously for their level of experience um, is not as uh, plentiful as some of the others so this will be the real test for them here. Raz getting aggressive just looking for that information in mid trying to pick up an early piece but if he's not careful he could be taken out here he stayed far too long that flash has taken him down Raz gives up an AWP and this train is actually departing Brisbane right now the Deceptors they take down another Sonic goes down does a bit of damage though and uh, it's back to a three versus four. Make that a two versus four. As the Brisbane Deceptors, they have completely split that B bomb site in half. They've gone straight up mid, straight towards B. There was no preparation from Melbourne Order. They weren't ready for that fast change of st strategy, should I say? As uh, Melbourne Order now have to retake here, and I don't know if they were going to go for it because they are now down to a four versus one. Yeah, Mizu. He did make his way over to Banana quite quickly, but it looks like he's just going to try to save that AK now. He's been doing such a great job there. That is a great change of pace. They obviously used the uh, the break in the game. It wasn't called by themselves, but uh, it was a break in the game nonetheless. So they actually readjusted their strategy. They went for something a little bit faster. Now, on a map like Inferno, if you're not ready for that, and if you don't have players in position to cover one another, set up crossfires, you're going to get found out. And that's exactly what happened to Melbourne Order there. So this is actually a slugfest between these two teams right now. They're going blow for blow as they, they trade rounds, and uh, obviously that has a, a massive effect on the CT side economy. It was off the back of that flash. That flash right at the start, blinding, was it Nickers with the orb at the top? Raz. The it was Raz, Raz with the orb. So the man completely white, couldn't see anything. Gets taken down, gives up the orb, and then you know that orb actually picked up two frags on the way over to the B site. So, bit, yeah. bit rough there. How a moment in time can change things. Yep. And uh, Melbourne Order, Obviously, uh, still able to afford weaponry in this, but they're playing a dangerous game right now, and it's just on Brisbane Deceptors to take this next round to really put some detrimental effect and taking some serious gambles here, Melbourne Order. Yeah, four players over on the A site. They've got four rifles. Utility's a little bit light, but it looks like they're just going to save it for a bit later on in the round. Not going to get too aggressive, just going to play the old trade-out setup. Two players playing close together, and we do have Sonic playing solo on the B site. The man who makes the calls. He's, he's going to be looking for information at some stage too, but the problem is from that arch position, you can get very easily locked out of that B-bomb site if they decide to aggress quite quickly. Luckily for them, they're actually split picking at the moment. It's a, a strategy from that T side, so they're simply trying to put themselves across the map as much as possible. Not really a presence from that uh, B side of things, but it doesn't matter. Brisbane Deceptors just combusting on the top of mid and uh, that unfortunately for Melbourne Order means that they are down two players but they actually haven't rotated anywhere towards that A-bomb site. There's an information play coming out because they didn't aggress quite quickly onto the A-bomb site despite having control of it so oh, I think Ooh. potentially communication here getting the better of Melbourne Order. They second guessed themselves they're going to be heading back to the A site although they did have the read now Sonic he's going to take point in just a moment and then Order are going to figure out they have made the wrong decision, and there we go. Deceptors opening up the B site. They will get this bomb down. Looks like Nikes is going to maybe go and try to find an exit frag, but making his way back into CT, looks like they're just going to try to save these. Yeah, JD on, on that lurk. That was, sorry, just to cut you off, but it was a yeah. crucial frag um, from uh, Raz there. Otherwise, he would have been in a good position to hunt for CTs. Now, what he was trying to do in that particular instance was actually take weapons out of the economy of the CT side. So... 
Important for him to try and find those frags, but importantly that uh, Raz took him down. And Brisbane Deceptors here, they are, just for the moment, playing it safe, just obviously keeping their own economy in check. But, I mean, in, in that instance, uh, that could have gone really pear-shaped for Melbourne Order. Oh, definitely. What we've seen so far, Deceptors, they aren't really splitting up too much. They keep, no. they keep a lo nice little group of four of them nice and close, looking to get those trade-outs, push towards the site. And, uh, they were deep in concentration there. Just much like yourself, actually, in the green room earlier. I noticed you actually <laughs> had the, you know, the, the, the run sheet out, you were looking through it, you were maybe looking a little bit nervous, but you've been able to drink it through since then. Oh, yeah, you know, this dare iced coffee, absolutely washing away any nerves I thought I had. Um, unfortunately, for me, I love milk, all right, so... <laughs> <laughs> but let's look at Brisbane Deceptors here. Matt CD on his favourite weapon of the AWP. So a little bit of a change here from Brisbane Deceptors as they actually look to take some control of Banana. They actually haven't been doing that early on. This is, this is funny because there's been a few er early opening rounds where Melbourne Order were the ones actually taking control of Banana. Later on in the piece, they didn't have the utility to do that. They didn't have the utility to, s to sustain control of the bomb site. But um, obviously, you know, if you do uh, expend all your utility early on in the piece trying to take control of Banana, it doesn't leave you with much in the tank if you actually have to retake A. So at the moment, in terms of the economic battle, whilst they're even on the scoreboard, you do see Brisbane Deceptors just with a slight advantage here. Sonic goes down, so Gott's finding him. And... Uh, there is a read here from Melbourne Order, though, that could turn things back in their favour, but that is a frag that is going to turn things around. Got on fire. Can't find the third, though. Raz finds the uh, trade frag on him, but they're not going to commit to this B-bomb site just yet. Yeah, they may actually be pushing back over to Mizu. He has that Zeus. Uh -oh. man, he's got uh -oh. it out. Short angle in Boiler. What are we going to see? No, he's got the wrong weapon out. Is anyone going to clear this? Oh, Dink coming out. Can't quite get a second. JD going to be taking down Mizu. Nikes and Raz look oh, no. something there, but he can't find it. Matt CD with the AWP are going to be taking Raz down. And now Nikes last alive in a 1v4. The man over on the B site going to be picking up that AK and looking to save in to the eighth round. Yeah, Matt CD not looking very compact at the moment. He's uh, quite dynamic around that map. But what I'm really impressed with is the ability of Brisbane Deceptors to find those opening frags. JD also uh, Yeti Bacon once again finding key frags for them, but in that round it was got. So it's it's not just one person simply doing this. It's a, a multitude of the players. And they're actually working and meshing together quite well. So, I mean, Kevin predicted boldly. I mean, if you looked at these two teams on paper, you wouldn't necessarily think that Brisbane Deceptors would be able to keep pace with some of these players in uh, Melbourne Order's lineup. But what is written and what is actually being, uh, I guess, played out here in the server, two completely different things. Yeah, well, I think it might come down as well to, like, the Deceptors. They've got a smaller lineup, so they are able to play with each other a little bit more often, get that chemistry running, and, you know, I feel like that's going to be a factor that's coming into play. Definitely at the moment. Obviously, uh, Brisbane Deceptors at this point in time have done a decent job of actually thinning the economy somewhat. And again, you can see another bike coming out from uh, Melbourne Order here, but it is another one that could potentially risk them... Uh, being on eco once again if they do not do the, the business of uh, winning the round. So, Brisbane Deceptors again, very, very slow in the early exchanges. Uh, we saw that change of pace and it's only come so far on that eco round. They haven't actually uh, done something as daring on the buy round, but let's just see what happens here as there is a, I guess, a very passive um, a play at this B uh, banana from uh, from both teams. There's not really too much being expended here. They are going to use that Molotov just clear out the car, try and drive Nikes back into that bomb site. Now he doesn't have a lot of information to work with. That smoke masked a lot of it, as Connie just does her best to take down chickens in apartments for the moment. But what that does is it alerts the CT side to her presence, so it lets them know that there is someone in there. And what it does is it's going to stop them from pushing for information. Oh, there we are. Bart going to be spotting JD there in Boiler, tagging him down to 19 HP. He will survive for the moment. Looks like we may see a bit of a rotate coming out. JD trying to be as quiet as possible. Looks like they're going to silently be making their way down second mid and through the tunnel oh, over towards the banana. Now, Melbourne Order here are going to be essentially in for a shot because they've actually used their utility a little bit early as uh, Brisbane Deceptors will make their way around. Still a split between the two CT uh, 
units at the A-bomb site and at that B-bomb site. So two up against five here in the B-bomb site. That is going to be a great flash for Nick as he finds one. Can't find anything more than that though as Connie finds two opening frags. She's done the damage as they take that B-bomb site. And I tell you what, Brisbane Deceptor's surprise package so far. Yeah, that take on the B-site once again. Everyone running in together and Connie Want to get those entries, doing a great job. Yeti, though, trying to find a bit of damage through the smoke. Knows exactly how Bart plays as they are ex-teammates. So, I'm taking... Mm. Now, that's another interesting storyline here, is there's a little rivalry between these two uh, teams in the sense that some players have played against one another and with another for quite some time. And when we're talking about that, we're talking about Yeti, Bacon, and Towski, teammates outside the Elite Series in this instance. But in this... A uh, particular exchange, they are up against one another and it's nice to get one over your teammates, particularly uh, in a very competitive setting like this. So, from Melbourne Order's perspective, they need to uh, tighten things up a little bit because it's starting to slip away from them a little. Mm. There you go. So, Deceptors with the Turian lead. It's looking quite good there. We have Gots top fragging with seven kills at the moment. Doing a great job. Now, Raz... We'll have that AWP, thanks to courtesy of Nick Ez, who actually saved that out for him. But um, coming into this, it's going to be important for a player like Raz to get a lot of confidence, get those picks going early on. We saw him take a risk, which actually led to him being overwhelmed in the early instances. But this time, he's, uh, he's going to play a little bit more defensive. And again, Melbourne Order making some interesting reads earlier on, just trying to stack some bomb sites. You can see it's B bomb site is not something that's typically played with three players on this map. So for them, it's going to be a, uh, an interesting read if they do manage to do to come B. But for the moment, you can see both teams just trying to wrestle some... Oh, no. Ooh. That's that's not what you want to have happen. Now, putting a smoke out would have actually extinguished that, but I don't think Gotts realised that he was in the flames because the decal didn't quite render for him. No, he was right in the corner. There was no flames under his feet, but it was just reaching him. <laughs> I feel like that may tilt him a little bit. The man not going to be too happy about that one, but it looks like the Deceptors have to go for that bomb. Fortunately for them, Order did not know the bomb was down, as they could not see it got falling there. It was hidden in the corner, dying to the flames. Through the fire, through the flames, unfortunately Gotts did not survive, and uh, we will remember him into the next round. But look, at this point in time, Brisbane Deceptors are going to go for the percentage play here. And uh, they're actually going to uh, tr try and split that B-bomb site by the look of things as they do try and sell a fake towards uh, A earlier on in a piece. And what that's going to do is hopefully pull someone off that B-bomb site and leave a two-on-one. So let's just see how this plays out. They're obviously waiting for uh, the call to come through. There hasn't been too much of an action, actually. In fact, they pulled out of uh, that B-bomb site altogether. And they're going to go back and uh, show the chances here at the A-bomb site. They don't have a lot of time, though, Mac. No, they don't. Ten seconds to get that bomb planted. They're going to have to hold W quite quickly. Look uh -oh. at that. JD going to be getting the entry. Is he, he going to be able to stop that bomb from going down? No, JD going to be picking up the second entry. Raz finding one on the corner, but that bomb goes down just in time. They oh. left a little bit too late, but it is not going to be enough. Matt CD taking the AWP out of Raz's hands as well. And here we are, Sonic swapping over to that AWP, but it looks like he's going to be running away. Nick has, though, he's hungry. He wants to pick this round up, oh, but that's no. CD holding the cross, hitting the shot. Now, Sonic, last alive for order, and we are going to see the Deceptors picking up a sixth round. That is, uh, I guess, a very, very deceptive round from the Deceptors. It was all a ruse from the Brisbane Deceptors. They were playing nice in warm-up by the looks of things, and they've fooled their opposition so far. But, I mean, this is a game of uh, many... Many different opportunities, the turning points and key moments in the game. Obviously, that, that pop flash from Raz, that led to a, a world of pain being inflicted on Melbourne Order and actually led to, uh, I guess, Brisbane Deceptors. It was a boost of confidence for them because they won a round on Eco. Now, while they might not have won the, uh, I guess, round immediately after that, it gave them belief that they could actually continue to, to make a run here. And it's important they make a run on the T side of Inferno because this is a map that does not let, like, I guess, uh, essentially lend itself to the attacking side. It's more of a defensive map. You can hold things up. You can slow things down, use that utility to really choke things up. But at the moment, they're having, uh, having a field day, Brisbane Deceptors, and they're not really being restricted here. There's no aggression coming out from Melbourne Order. They're not really playing to these choke points. They're simply just letting... Brisbane Deceptors do what they wish, no chance of information. Something else you'll notice is there isn't really a dedicated entry fragger for the Deceptors at the moment. We had Connie entering over to the B site, we've seen Yeti grab a couple, I think he hit the B site earlier, got similar situation, getting that double um, and then falling to, I think it was Raz from the Garden earlier, but you know, no one is actually, and JD, last round. 
opening up the A slot. So they're all pitching in, and th that's the most important part. Is when you rely too heavily on one player, things start to fall apart. If that player's not going to actually make it, now that is a fantastic play here. JD is looking so sharp on his entries as uh, Mizu finds Ooh. nothing. He Ooh. simply perishes in the flames there. He was low to begin with, so he's literally dancing with the devil in the pale moonlight. But <laughs> As far as we're concerned here, this A-bomb site defense is still on. There are still two members of Melbourne Order here to try and keep order. So uh, that smoke is actually going to prevent them from teaming up and cross-firing as Sonic goes down. Now, they have made a play here. That's an important frag from Raz. As he looks for a second, can he find it? If he does, that A-bomb site is looking more secure, but it's not to be the case as uh, Nick has left on his lonesome here. Rotating off that B bomb site. There's not a lot he can do. Now, look at his uh, loadout. There's nothing really there to work with. He's simply just got to try and survive. I feel like he isn't in a good position to get some exits, though. If they don't clear apartments, which it looks like they may be trying to do, JD, he went for a little jump peek in Boiler to try to find the info. But he's not going to find anything. Nick has. Oh, no way. No. He's got the kit. He could go for a ninja. I don't know he, if it's on. He's too far away. You're not going to get past him. He's too far away. If he could no clip, if he could, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, <laughs> look, tell you what, you're not going to sell a Deceptor a ruse at all. I cannot be deceived at this point in time. Nikes <laughs> takes the exit frag onto Connie. But that is about as good as it gets for them in that round, as we do see now. Brisbane Deceptors really starting to run away from uh, their opposition. Now, we saw the money there. It's not looking great for Melbourne Order. They're having some difficulty just managing that CT side economy. You said the game was really, really uh, a balancing act in some instances. The CT side is generally more expensive to, uh, to buy that weaponry, to purchase that utility. It is uh, more, uh, more costly to be on that CT side. So they are really struggling right, right now because they're not getting the money they need to keep buying in the rounds. Yeah, you could definitely see the scales were tipped in the Deceptor's favour. I think it was Matt CD who was almost max money, which is that 16,000 there. Beautiful little entry towards apartments. JD taken down Mizu. Although, look at this Bart with the CZ. He's going to be finding one onto Connie in apartments. Managing to get that trade. He does fall back to the balcony. And JD wants to go for the refrag. Can't find anything. Tries to get rid of the AK. Just to make sure that Bartowski cannot pick that one up if he does decide to re-aggress. That's super smart. Yeah, good plays. Throwing the AK over the fence, making sure that the CTs can't save that weapon if they do stay over on the A site. But it looks like we are going to see that bomb rotating up Banana over towards B. Nikes holding solo over at Newbox at the back of the B site. Gots coming in slowly, clearing the angles. Didn't clear car. Balls of steel, not checking that one. Does he dare? Does he dare? That's the question. Now, this is a very, very tense moment here. Nikes does not have a lot of information. He's playing a very, very passive angle in that B-bomb site. I don't know whether or not he's going to be able to try and take down four. That's a very difficult task for the best of them. But Nikes has shown glimpses of that in the past. But he does take one, looking for the second. Flash is going to assist him. He can't be stopped, though. It's a Yeti Bacon uh, does take down... Nikes in that B-bomb site, and it's back to a three versus three, but the weaponry difference is going to be key here because they don't have a lot to work with, and Matt CD just keeps Bartowski zoned at the bottom of B-bomb site with that AWP, and this is not looking great for Melbourne mm. Water unless Raz has his say. Raz just missed that one dig there. We are going to see Yeti getting the spray down, just surviving with the six HP. Raz almost did find that frag, but that'll be that. Deceptor's picking up an eighth round, five round lead now for them. And we do see Melbourne Order now finally getting on top of their money, finally being able to actually buy into this round. They've taken a, uh, a big risk here, though. They've gone for a very expensive uh, set of weaponry. You can see the two AWP play there. Now, on a map like Inferno, you don't have a lot of options for the use of that AWP in the early instances. You can pretty much pick down mid. You can get super aggressive, try to pick down a second mid, but uh, you can both certainly sit at the top of Banana as well. So there's not a huge amount of options like there are on other maps, but it can be very, very effective, particularly if your opposition aren't, ex aren't actually expecting it. So Nikes makes that work in the early instances, finds the frag, and that feels like the first time in a long time that things have gone Melbourne Order's way. Yeah, so they did manage to pick that frag up, and they have fallen back on the B site, getting a bit passive. Connie making a bit of noise in apartments here with JD, just clearing those angles, getting ready to make his... Uh, their way, sorry, <laughs> down Carps. And Mizu here, up on the balcony. Nice little tight angle. 
you wouldn't usually hold an angle like that if you're playing online, but here at LAN, you're able to hit those shots. That's right. Now, the first two frags this round have gone to those two uh, AWPs or the sniper rifles for those of you at home. And uh, we do see just, a, I guess, a more defensive style now from Melbourne Order. They've got the player advantage. They don't need to take risks. They don't need to push. They don't need to do anything silly here because this round, just by the numbers, as things maybe thin out in terms of trade trade, it should be theirs. But Eddie Bacon, he's been sharp. He finds his former teammate in Bartowski. And that actually makes things really awkward here in the A bomb site because you can see the CTs, they're about to be pincered. Yeah, we do have Mizu holding in a nice strong position, which is Pit. Oh no, look at that Yeti gonna be finding the angle onto Raz, but they know that Mizu is hiding in Pit. That's the nice little pop flash. Yeti may have dodged it, but God's uh -oh. not gonna be able to take him down. Mizu, massive play! But he can't quite hold Yeti Bacon. Gonna be able to pick that bomb up now in the 1v2. Will he be able to get it planted? Looks like Sonic coming in through Moto. Gonna be waiting for Nikes for the moment. They are gonna hold. Orb shot, trying to bait Yeti to go for the peak there. He's gonna find the timing. Does get the flick onto the head, but Sonic too sharp. Picks up that headshot, and we are gonna see Order picking up a fourth round here. And they are gonna go around and grab those two AWPs again. They're the most expensive pieces of kit you can um, get, particularly with a, uh, a loadout like theirs. Now, as I said, they're not the most expensive rifles, but they're most effective because yeah. they're that one-shot kill. So in terms of um, how they're going to, uh, to manage the rest of the team's money, I dare say rifles are quite uh, easily going to come out for the rest of the team as we do see the utility shuffle there. Basically, they're, they're sorting things out. They're throwing weaponry around. They're making sure that everybody has the best possible chance in this round. So we do see a full kit out coming from both these two teams. And this is going to be the telling round because it can uh, basically let Melbourne order back in. Or oh, Brisbane Deceptors, will their uh, momentum continue? Yeah, they were all quite low on the money there. I think 650 or 700 was about the most that anyone on order had left in the bank. So if they lose all of their rifles this round, if Deceptors win this one, that is going to be absolutely massive for Brizzy. And you do see them showing a lot of presence at Banana. We're going to take that early control, but no rotates coming out from order. Playing three men over on the A site. But Deceptors, they've essentially just been playing together the whole time. And Melbourne still haven't figured this one out. Sonic going to be finding Whoa. two through the smoke. Molotov taking out Nick as We do see Gots get in the trade onto Sonic as well. Now in the 2v3 situation, we are going to see Raz throwing a bit of util. Flashes, but that bomb still hiding at barbecue for the moment. Not going to be making its way onto site. They are going to be going through the smoke. Matt CD is going to find one of the Raz. Play was massive, but Gots could not hit the shots. Bart's going to find himself the frag and the bomb. And now in a 1v2... You see Matt CD last alive with the AWP, which is a very unconventional weapon to have on your T-side Inferno. But Mizu coming in on the flank. Matt CD unaware, and he's going to be taken down unless Mizu oh, whips no. it. He eventually pulls it back, <laughs> picks up the frag, but that round order needed to win it, and they've done it. Going into the second last round of the half. Yeah, things, things almost got a little bit awkward there, didn't they? I mean, that, that frag took a little bit too long. It's, <laughs> you get it into that fifth and sixth bullet of the spray, and you start to panic a little bit, but I mean, we do see uh, Melbourne Order finally get themselves back and stringing some rounds together. They haven't been able to do that since the first two rounds. Now, that is a telling sign of a team that has certainly uh, maybe lost a bit of confidence and obviously lost control of their economy in the early instances, but this is the change in pace we see from Brisbane Deceptors now. He has been discouraged from doing so. Matt CD has been just pushed back a little bit. Utility. And he's a confident man at the best of times, but... Confident? He just ran down mid with an AWP. That's pretty up, confident. Up mid, not even down. The man, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> On his day, can certainly cause teams trouble. And that's certainly what he's doing now. But uh, look, Matt City is, uh, has been halted. But the rest of the team stand ready, willing, able at the gates of the A-bomb site. As uh, we do have Melbourne Order very much holed up and just, again, waiting things out. They don't have a lot of information, but what they do have is the backup of Nikes. He's actually rotated back towards his A-bomb site just based on the play. But Matt CD, super aggressive, takes down Raz as that AWP goes out of the hands of order. And Nikes is in position, almost uh, ready to go straight away. He's picked up that AWP and now they will make their way towards his A-bomb site. This is super awkward for the CT side. The frags go either way. JD finds one, but it's more importantly, the frags here on the rotators as JD finds the second. And it's just Sonic. He's all alone at the B-bomb site and certainly much like their chances of winning the round are fading <laughs> as uh, Brisbane Deceptors here have actually turned the tide 
back against Melbourne Order. So it's important here that Sonic keeps this because it gives them more options into the next round. You said their money was starting to get a little bit thin. I know how that feels. <laughs> but Melbourne Order's perspective right now is just to hold on to that weapon and they can't do so. Gotts finds him. There's not a lot of places to hide on a map like Inferno if you are stuck at that B-bomb site. So unfortunately Sonic does go down. It's the last round of the half. They're going to buy what they can. But look at that money. It's not too, uh, not too happy at all. No, definitely unhappy money. You know, if I had if I had 50 bucks in the bank, I'd be a little bit worried as well. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I can be sympathetic to that. You live the esports life. Yeah. <laughs> Got to start somewhere, right? Anyway, we are into the last round of the half. Deceptors looking to pick up a tenth. And uh, they definitely have the better buy going into the round. Four AKs, one AWP on Matt CD. Again, this man has non-stop had an AWP for the last, like, ten rounds. He's, he's been unleashed. Absolutely unleashed. Now, we said this map was going to largely revolve around control of utility, control of economy. That has definitely spiralled out of control for order in, in the, uh, I guess, the middle stages, the, uh, the bulk of that half. And they're paying the price for it now. So that being said, it is a game of two halves. We are going to swap at that 15 round mark. So, you know, the teams will have a chance to actually play things out a little bit. And it's important that Melbourne order get this next round. It will turn things back just a little bit in their favour. And, uh, you know, keep Brisbane Deceptors honest because, for me, they have been a surprise package. No one expected them to do things like this, and it's important that they do continue to roll with that momentum. And if they can take this last round of the half, for them, it's been a fantastic half. M remember, they did lose the pistol and the round after that. Ooh, nice little... Was that, was that a team Molotov that, it, that went sour, or...? It could have been. Well, anyway, that smoke coming out a little bit late. Nick has been making his way through the smoke, looking to do a bit of damage. Connects some bullets. But not enough. Definitely could have gone and hit a few more shots there, but he gets the reload. Falls back safely. Rotates coming in from his brethren. We are going to see him try not. Do a bit of damage through that smoke from Con. He will just hide and look to play for the retake. We are going to see Mizu falling to Matt CD, who gets aggressive. The bomb is planted successfully here by the Deceptors. That's CD at Banana. The bomb is planted for him. He's going to be hiding in the cutout. Bartowski and Nikes looking to do some damage. Almost a crossfire here, but not quite. Connie holding the angle from Dark. Matt CD has been spotted. He crosses. Dangerous maneuver. <laughs> he does survive. Nikes finds Connie. Takes her down. Ooh. Now Matt CD is going to find one on the Nikes. It is a 1v1 for the end of the half. Bartowski. He's going to pick up the frag, but he has no kid. He has no time. Oh, no. He can He's only take one chicken. thing with him. He's taking the chicken down with him. And that'll be that. And wow, what a round. What a half from the Brisbane Deceptors. They've sold the ruse, <laughs> at least for now, because it will be a game of two halves. But the second half of this match will be coming up very, very shortly. Now, as I look, look down the barrel of the camera, I see a lot of people out there who doubted the Brisbane Deceptors. For the record, Kevin on the analyst desk was not one of those people. So, he, well, for at least now his job is safe in that regard. But, <laughs> so far it's been a good half for them. They've, they've definitely done all the right things. They kept the pressure on Melbourne Order, that economic pressure as well. And it all started with a pop flash at the top of mid. Yeah, they shared the load. The scoreboard is looking quite even all across there, although I do believe Matt CD would probably be getting up to the top with all those orb shots that he has been hitting. Where are we looking? That is... Uh, it's actually Gotts. Gotts with 14 to 9. That is a, a cracking effort from him in yeah. in that regard. But, I mean, as we said, we were looking at uh, key, key moments in this half, and it wasn't just coming from one player. It's coming from a multitude of different players, and we look across Melbourne order there. There's a little bit of pressure now as they go on to that... Uh, that uh, CT side, or T side, should I say, yep. because it's not as easy. The map itself is inherently biased just to the CT side, just for the nature of the fact that they just have to sit back and defend. They don't yep. have to do anything by default. They have to you know, make the plays. It's the T side that have to be the aggressors. They're the attacking side. So Brisbane yep. Deceptors, by all means, have done a fantastic job of that. But 
What do Melbourne Order need to do in terms of getting their headspace right? You could see that that you know things weren't quite working for them. They made some interesting reads. They, you know, potentially pushed a little bit too far in terms of those rotations. In fact, at times they over rotated to bomb sites, second guess themselves. Do you think maybe the uh, the stage is having an effect on that? Maybe. Like, they're just not hitting their shots at the moment. Every time Deceptors, they were pushing onto sites, they were just whiffing. We saw that a lot. Even with Mizu in pit, he just was not hitting the sprays. Sometimes he'd pull it back. There wasn't really the time where he'd hit, like, you know, the, the cheeky two-tap. Mm. Like, double double headshot, take him down. Like it just, it just Yeah, it was, it was quite uncharacteristic, I guess, from a few of these players in the sense that they should have been making frags where looking for one, maybe two, and more importantly, they weren't surviving. On the CT side, you need to maintain that player advantage. So for them to lose a player and only take someone out, only one person, that's disastrous. A one-for-one -one trade for a CT side is disastrous. So uh, let's see if they can turn things back around in their favour. Melbourne Order now going back onto that T side. As we said, they are on the aggressing side of things. They've got a similar amount of utility to uh, what Deceptors were running as well. And the Deceptors, we just see Gots with the kit and the flash. And Yeti going to be... Look at those frags. Can't hit the shots. Mizu and Sonic picking up the first two frags of the round. We do see them taking the B site almost, but uh -oh. Gots has something to say about that one. JD is going to be finding Sonic on the fast flank as well. The bomb's going down. The T's, they have managed to pick it back up. And they may actually decide to go back to the A site. They have, and uh, JD has taken some damage. We're also finding frag as well. Now, Matt City has the information as they do get themselves back up towards his A bomb site, but there's no commitment just yet. They're waiting things out. They're waiting for Mizu to get in position here because they want to give themselves a better chance. And Mizu takes Matt City down eventually, but that could have got a little bit hairy as Matt City was also firing at another target there, too. So, JD, he's been sharp for them. He doesn't have a lot of health to work with as. Brisbane Deceptors now forced to retake, so it's a good early exchange here from uh, Melbourne Order. But can they hold this bomb site? JD making his way into Diggity. Gott's going to be finding the headshot on the Bartowski, and now we are left with the 2v2 situation. Mizu playing from site with only 47 HP. Is he going to be able to hold JD looking for the info? Mizu taking a pot shot. Raz going to be spotted there. We do see Gott's taking down Mizu now in the 1v1. They know where each other are, and we are going to see Raz coming out on top there, hitting the shots, taking down Gott. And there we are, Order picking up the T pistol as well. Three frags for Gots in that round. It very nearly turned the tide in the favour of Brisbane Deceptors from the get-go. Super important pistol round. Reason being, the pressure really starts to mount on that T side. You lose uh, a pistol round and you're already down by a margin where uh, you know, your opposition are almost in double figures, or in double figures already, sorry. Um, that's, that's quite daunting for a lot of teams and it takes a lot of experience to grind yourself back from a position like that. But Brisbane Deceptors here have actually gone for a buy in this instance. So the confidence is certainly full to the brim for them as uh, they do try and make these pistols work. That scout obviously gives them some range. Now what it will do is it won't always necessarily take the, uh, an opponent down, but what it will um, allow the teammates to do is actually use those pistols a little bit more effectively. It'll take a lot of HP off, uh, off players, and there's a good frag there from Raz, an important one, as it opens up B for the team if they do choose to take it. But from uh, the perspective of Brisbane Deceptors, it just thins the numbers a little bit. It, uh, at the moment, is still around very much in the balance. JD just getting maybe a little bit too aggressive with that scout, but uh, he needs to be careful here. He's still alive, so that's a start. You know, you can't say the same for Connie. She got a little bit aggressive at the top of Banana and lost her life for doing so, although here we are, Yeti, with the CZ, going to be finding one. Manages to get the reload off in time, which is definitely going to favour him, although Mizu with the AK going to be getting that trade. Now we are left in a 3v4 situation. Sonic here, jumping around, hiding in the corner, and Raz posted with the AK, going to hit the headshot onto Gods. Now the B-side is open for business for order, but they don't know it, and they're going to be falling back towards T-stairs, waiting for the aggression to come in, which Matt CD has shown. He'll be taken down, and we do see the bomb heading towards that open A-site. I wouldn't be surprised to see JD, once that bomb is planted at the A-bomb site, just try and save it, because he can do a lot in the round uh, following, particularly if they do retain that scout. So whilst uh, the rest of the team have fallen, um, good opening exchange is actually from Raz. Now, Raz is a player that thrives on confidence. You give him confidence of those frags early on in the piece, he's going to be a player that will run with that for the rest of the half. So that may bode um, very well for Melbourne Order. Hopefully for their sake it will, but um, he needs to continue that momentum here because he's a player that on his day, I think at the moment he also holds one of the, I think it's the best HLTV.org rating for a land final. Really? Of all time. Well, there you go. Statsman Jim coming out to play. <laughs> and if it isn't, it's probably been overtaken by someone, you know, of, of uh, stellar proportions. But either way, he's certainly um, a player that has shown a lot of potential in the past and shows glimpses of it every now and then. It's just about that consistency. But 
Now Melbourne Order are starting to really narrow that gap. There we are. So only three behind now. We do see JD successfully saving that scout, which is uh, for all you noobs out there, a one-shot headshot. You know, so it is a very effective weapon for $1,700. You could do the same with a Deagle, but uh, the Scout, you are much faster when it's in your hands. That is definitely a little bonus. And more importantly, in this particular instance, it is a ranged weapon. So you don't be surprised to see JD doing what he's doing now and just trying to take the aggression here at mid and doesn't actually land a shot there, but that was very dangerous because he uh, could have done a bit of uh, chip damage to his opposition there as he does not find another frag here. He doesn't find any damage either. Takes a lot for his uh, effort as that... Mac 10 from Nickers is going to come out and just try and catch him napping. Not to be the case. Brisbane Deceptors there. Look at them stacking that side of the arch. They're ready to see if someone is going to take the challenge. I just have to say, Mac 10, great weapon. I love it. What is it? Was it named after you? I, I hope so. No, $1,050 gives you a $600 reward. It's just top notch. All right, especially when you know that the opposite side is not going to have any armor, which would generally, generally be the CT side, as uh, you can only purchase it on that T side, Jim. <laughs> A little, little tidbit of knowledge there. I'm going to use that at future trivia night. <laughs> maybe maybe even in some counter commentary. Who knows? But tell you what, they're cleaning up here now. Connie does find some uh, resistance. But uh, he seems to find another frag. Can't quite get there in the end. It's just got left. The MAC-10s, they want that money bonus. They want that, uh, that money in the coffers for Melbourne Order as Brisbane Deceptors do go down. And things are starting to heat up a little bit here. We do see finally now the CTs have got that money. They've got their money right. They've got the abacuses out. They've <laughs> consulted their accountants. Their economy is fantastic. But it also comes with the uh, potential for being upset in this round. As you can see, there's not a lot left. That's the dangers of being on that CT sites. As we said, it's easier to defend sites. However, it's not easy being a CT living in Sydney. It's not easy being a CT if you have no utility either. And looking at that, Matt CD prioritising the AWP over anything else, even getting that head armour instead of a smoke. That one could come back to haunt him, although there isn't Mac 10 in play on Bartowski and at that UMP on Sonic as well. They're going for what people would generally call a bonus round, trying to, you know, buff the economy a little bit. Oh, JD hasn't oh. been spotted by the first one. He will pick up one. No, he didn't pick up anything. Matt CD's the one to hit those shots. Matt CD. <laughs> Matt CD. Going absolutely massive. <laughs> oh no, you're not trying this, are you? <laughs> All right. Matt CD does eventually go down here on the balcony. Two versus two as the CTs circle the site. They are looking for some prey, and that prey comes in the form of the terrorist opposition as now Mizu does go down, leaving a two versus one. Nick is in that bomb site, and he has some work to do. Ooh. And uh, it is going to be certainly a hard yakker for him, but he does find a better position here. So he'll catch out. One, he does. Frag there as Connie goes down and now forces this one versus one as he plays a dangerous game with Gots. Gots has that one-shot kill, the AWP. And uh, he's baited out Nikes. Nikes is potentially oh. for the shot. What a play from Gots around. But I don't know if this is going to go down to the wire or not. This is super close. We don't have the he's not going to get there. He doesn't have uh, and that'll be that. If know. he had a kid, the game changes at that point. Because Brisbane Deceptors, they're back on the board. Now it's back to 9 and 10. But here's the, uh, the gritty news for Brisbane Deceptors fans. Their team is going to be on an eco. Oh. It's not going to happen be. here, Mac. It's not going to happen. They're not going to buy. I'd love to see him come back. Or, or, you know, go for the floor. Like the Backstreet Boys. Go for the floor. <laughs> Backstreet Boys are back. Brizzy Deceptors are back. I don't know. You could work that into a jingle, surely. Maybe. Some, yeah. someone, someone will uh, help us out with that one, no doubt. I thought your um, banana bending friends would be going for that banana controller. That is correct. If you're uh, from Queensland, you're affectionately known as a banana bender, but at the moment the banana is being bent by Melbourne Order and certainly served up on a platter. As uh, <laughs> funny enough, they're not looking for a split here, but that pist pistol of Yeti Bacon does a lot of damage. He's unlucky not to get Nickers there. Another bullet landed, and that would have been a very different story, but it surrenders control of the A bomb site. That is definitely true. Matt CD, Gotts and Connie all the way over on the B site. Not sure if they're going to bother going for the retake. They may just try to get some exits, save some of those weapons as their economy is not looking too crash hot right now. But uh, Matt CD still hiding at Banana. It's only Gotts that's hungry right now. But we do see, who's that? Sonic with the UMP. He's quite expendable compared to the others with the AKs who don't want to give up those weapons. Sonic does get the info, Connie. Tagging him down to 52 HP. Still 12 bullets in the clip, getting that reload off. And Raz posting. 
Now, just looking for some information here, Connie, just spotting it out. She's not going to be pressed from uh, the T-side. They need to, uh, I guess, look for these frags because their economy is quite good. So they uh, have the luxury of doing that. But I believe they're going to retain them for the moment as uh, Christian Deceptors. Oh, it's a dangerous exchange there at the end, but there is the trade made. So Sonic does go down, but he uh, aggressed with that UMP. So it's just looking for that uh, money bonus. But more importantly, just taking something dangerous out of the CT side's economy. Now, it's not really going to affect things too much because that, P uh, that uh, CZ as a sidearm, not really effective when you've got a rifle. The draw time is just far too long Ridiculous. for it to be an effective sidearm. Either way, it's back to 10 all. So that good work from Brisbane Deceptors in the first half is coming undone. Yeah, they just, uh, obviously, they can't stay all together on the CT side like they were on the T side, but it uh -oh. is what it is. Look at this change of pace here from Order. They've been so controlled in their aggression so far, but this time they've completely busted up mid. Those Molotovs Ooh. will make things difficult for JD. That Molotov's not going to get off in time. They've completely caught the Deceptors off guard. Betty finds one. Mizu finds a nice entry frag there. Times two as JD is still alive in this library, but he's certainly not having a quiet time. And for them now, Brisbane Deceptors, it is difficult because A is a very, very easy site to actually uh, retake, but they don't have the numbers or the utility to do so, especially when compared to that B-bomb site. So at the moment, they're just going to hold back. And, uh, well, for the first time in a long time, the Brisbane Deceptors are back under the thumb of Melbourne Order. What do you reckon? Was that a lack of communication that caused the old slip up there? Matt CD caught looking into apartments, unaware that his moto was open. I think it was just the sheer aggression there from uh, from Melbourne Order. There's only so much you can communicate when you don't have information. And uh, they will push right back into jungle early on in the piece. And that is certainly what caught them off guard. JD, there's not a lot he could do. Not really. He had a four versus one there if he chose to try and step out. But surviving that round, Connie with a crucial frag there. As uh, Brisbane Deceptors, they do hold on to some weaponry. The economy's not great. They're probably weighing up whether or not they can actually buy things out here. You can see things are starting to really... Uh, Really go down to the wire in this particular match now. Melbourne Order, their economy's healthy, they're looking good, they're looking confident. And uh, this is this is going to be quite some uh, some ride yet for the Brisbane Deceptors. Yeah, Gots, we see him with the solo effort first to crack the 20. He's got 20 there, you go. there. Milestone. Milestone. Many milestones here today. That's first the uh, <laughs> most notable for Gots. First to crack 20. Oh, wait. Oh, no. I thought he hit that shot, but it was Matt CD with the frag. Tell you what though, Sonic finds a nice opening frag here onto that B-bomb site. So it just leaves Connie in the position on her lonesome as that Molotov. will actually buy her a little bit of time, but I think it's actually uh, Eddie Bacon. It could be under some pressure here as he does go down to Raz. Raz just running straight into that smoke, not aware of the possibility there, and just choosing his moment correctly. Raz, those frags early on did him some, uh, some good as that confidence starts to brim for him now. And he's even pushed into CT, taking down a third. So Raz has certainly opened up here. New Zealand superstar Raz has uh, certainly entered the building here today. So dangerous. He is. You know, in and out of game. Went straight through that smoke. I think he was actually flashed from his teammate, like, behind him. So that allowed him to go through. Caught whoever that was off guard. Was it Yeti? I think it might have been Yeti. It was just a whole rough time. Anyway, we do see Matt CD in apartments trying to save... Sonic making a bit of noise, making a lot of noise as he comes up the stairs. Matt CD fully ready for this one. It takes the gun out of Sonic's hand. But now Order, they have the location of this Deceptor. And Matt CD going to be holding a nice little angle here. Rips the shot, falls into apartments, and he will be able to save this weapon. This one's really going down to the wire here for the Brisbane Deceptors. As, uh, there is a pause coming out. I do believe this one is going to be of the tactical nature. So uh, Brisbane Deceptors is going to talk things out, drink things through a little bit, get themselves back in, uh, in focus at the moment because for them, it's been a long time since they tasted success. It has been. It's been a little while. Order, you know, they're hitting shots. They're picking up rounds. They're doing everything that you need to do, working together. The utility usage as well is definitely what's helping them get to the sites. You know, working as teams, making the plays, pushing smokes, not generally what you want to see, but it is working for them. So... At the moment, you know, whatever works, whatever works. And they've taken the lead. They're looking to get the W. And uh, Deceptor's forcing the pause, trying to decide what they want to do. And if you were the Deceptors, there's certainly a, uh, a lot to do for them at the moment. As we said, the first thing that they need to do is get that money management correct. It's, it's not easy. I mean, 
you run out of options on that CT side, particularly when you're under the pump and the things start to get down to uh, you know the last few rounds of the game. So you, you have to start making some decisions, some tough calls to, uh, I guess, just make calculated risks, make some plays here. They haven't seen either team on that CT side really do too much. Now, Melbourne ought to try it in the early instances, and they got punished for it severely. But uh, we haven't seen Brisbane Deceptors make plays like that at all. Now, Matt CD just pushes a grenade down into mid. Nickers takes some damage there for that. But Gots, he saw him first, but was just waiting for a better shot. Raz, on the other hand, not the case. So... As I said, he's a player that's certainly exploded into the last few rounds, and that, as we saw just then, has caused trouble for Brisbane Deceptors. Well, they know that Connie plays at Newbox as well, so surely they're going to Molotov this one in just a moment. Matt CD causing a bit of distraction for the moment. Connie peeking. Nice little bait there. We do Ooh. see Matt CD finding one through the coffin as well on a butt. Now, Connie, 19 HP. We'll find one more into Nick as that bomb is down. Raz and Mizu last two alive for order. 2v4 now. Deceptors with the man advantage rotating in as they know exactly where the bomb is as well. Matt CD trying to get aggressive, whips the shots. Mizu going to be hitting the flick and landing the headshot. Now Raz gets tagged down and is taken out. JD doing the honours there. Mizu going to be spotted through the edge of the smoke. JD actually picking that one up with the HE grenade. And there you go, Deceptors. The tack pause becoming useful. Now that round was all on Connie. Staying alive at that position bought her team so much time. And uh, whilst Matt CD did a great job of making sure that crossfire worked, even though the, f the fact that the smoke was down, Connie staying alive meant that at no point in time did Melbourne order have control of that bomb site, nor did they look like it. They were simply just shut out every time they got in. And more importantly, she didn't peek at all after that particular instance. So that's a lot of discipline there, and it worked for them. But now they need to maintain. They need to make sure they put a multitude of rounds on the board in success. So for them, it's important that they follow that round up with another round win here. We did see the early three-person set up over towards the B site, there, but Gotts has made his way back over to the A site for the moment. Order. Four players, or well, three in apartments, one looking to make their way through mid, but Matt CD checking. Boiler. And interesting that they went back to a slower strategy, because for me... Melbourne order, when they looked most dangerous and, and when things started to really happen from them, is when they started to take aggression and that really caught Brisbane Deceptors off guard. And I think in that instance, Brisbane Deceptors may have anticipated some action early on in the B, but uh, putting three towards that bomb site early on might have been an indication of that, but either way it hasn't actually transpired as now Brisbane Deceptors do still have to defend this A bomb site, and there are a lot of T's just waiting on the doorstep. Well, looking at the utility left on the Deceptors, there's only a Molotov and a Flash. So if a A hit does come out from order, it could be quite dangerous for the Deceptors. Although they will keep those guns out and be ready to hit shots. Matt CD is going to be fighting one on the Nikes, But Mizu gets that trade. Now we're left with a 4v4 situation. Only one Flash left on the Deceptors. Plenty of utility still in order's utility belt, I guess. Ooh. Corny here at <laughs> the Coffin is going to be fighting one of the Raz. Goes for the reload, has her teammate there, Sonic, almost gets the spray transfer, but Connie's going to find one more. Looking for another, does the damage, but can't get the frag. Bartowski are going to be taking her down now, Mizu and Bartowski left in a 2v2 against JD and Gotts. Ooh. You can see Mizu landing the dirty, dirty headshot onto JD. Some timing going the way of Mizu there, because I think Gotts just missed him, so that would have been a very different round. Had he not gotten away? Because the CTs had great positioning there, they were coming from two different areas of the map that could potentially have pinted... Uh, that last remaining player in the bomb side, but not to be. Bartowski stays alive and may even be able to pick up another frag here at the moment. Gotts goes down, so unfortunately for Brisbane Deceptors, they face that hard truth of the reset. This one's going to hurt. Look at that. Ooh. Not, not as actually damaging as I thought it would be. It's not a hard reset. It's still a reset, though. So they're going to have some options in terms of what they do potentially with some pistols here. And on a map like... Inferno in close quarters, that CZ, it's so lethal, obviously, uh, at the best of times. But you put that thing in close quarters, um, like some of these choke points allow, and you certainly have a recipe for disaster if you don't take your time. You saw maybe some trepidation there from, um, you know, T's looking to trade, particularly when that CZ was the weapon that actually got the first frag. They don't necessarily pounce to get that trade because they're just so scared of that weapon and what it is at the moment. As uh, Sonic finds that frag onto Gotts, nice and sharp from him there. He does take some damage for it, but more importantly, he stays alive. Any damage that the Deceptors can do right now will definitely work in their favour, especially if they are able to save some of those weapons as well. You know, they should be able to buy into the next round. It won't 
be the greatest buyer, but you know, having weapons is better than not having. Or you know, you have weapons. That's <laughs> just simple math. Quick math. <laughs> quick math. Weapons good, not weapons bad. <laughs> but for Brisbane Deceptors now, they uh, are doing it one player less, and obviously those pistols, the P250. It's a great choice. Great choice. Only costing $300, it's a very, very effective weapon in close range. Not as effective as, say, for example, the CZ, but if they don't uh, trade out here properly, Melbourne Order could be in some trouble, particularly if Connie does some damage early on in with that uh, P250. You know, it looks like Order, they are going to be hitting the B site. Not a lot of time to go for the rotate. Raz may be looking to fake the rotate over to the A site. We got Nick as <laughs> with the double on the oh, A-side. what? Sonic taking oh. down Matt CD, who picked up the 2K with the USP. The man too sharp right now. He couldn't turn it into a round. You don't often see that with the uh, USP, though. That's the thing. No. Not, not in quick succession like that. So that could have been an interesting round. But now we will see Brisbane Deceptors obviously uh, make the decision to buy here in this round with what they can. So from their perspective, it's, it's a very, very... Uh, very, very thin blade that they run across here at the moment. There's Matt CD, of course, with that Adby P as well. But this time, at least, they have some, some more utility to use as uh, Matt CD couldn't actually afford that armor in this instance. And that has actually meant that he's been taken down. Regardless, anyway, it was a headshot. But still, victim to potential aim punch here. And that leaves Connie for the moment to just buy her time and uh, just wait for that teammate to actually rotate to this bomb site and... Uh, Eddie Bacon, just taking his time. The information coming through from Connie that's not as urgent as it may seem, but it's left them in an instance here where they don't have as many numbers to cover the A-bomb site, and it's not going to be acted on here by Melbourne Order. In fact, Eddie Bacon finds a frag as well, so Raz and Sonic have gone down, and the pendulum swings back in favour of Brisbane Deceptors, at least for now, with a minute left to play on the clock. We did see that bomb rotating up banana. It looked like Order did want to hit the B site, but a massive play. Good teamwork from Yeti and Connie. But Nick is on the lurk. He was over on the A site last round, but this one he's come to the B site, hiding in the corner. Connie unaware at the moment. Timing definitely not going to favour her. But there, but Nick has with the headshot, catching her off guard and taking down Yeti as well. But over on the A site, taking down JD, and the bomb is going to be coming through Speedway all the way through CT over to the B site, and it looks like Order are going to be picking up a 15th. Yep, yeah, then that for them is match point too. So if, if Gots here can uh, just save his weapon, obviously, as I said, it gives them more options in the flying round, but they're in a position where they're not going to be able to afford too much. I see pistols at best, um, and obviously if Gots can retain that weapon, fantastic for him. This is, an, this is a situation where I should be seeing Order uh, certainly pressing for more info and pushing. They are going towards the uh, the wrong area of the map, though. But, I mean, they're doing the right thing. And uh, they're looking for uh, that weapon to take Gots out, to take that weapon out of the next round. And for them, if that's the case, that is the situation, um, I guess, dire for Brisbane Deceptors. So, for the moment, Gots remains safe. But it's going to get sweaty. Oh, Bart's got the knife out. He pulls the gun out a little bit too late. But we'll upgrade to the AK. Definitely could be a factor going into the next round. That round all started with Matt CD trying to get that boost off. It just went went downhill from there. Went a little bit pear-shaped. But uh, I think right now, Brisbane Deceptors need to take our energy <laughs> as uh, they are looking to take a few risks here in this round. We see the CZs come out. We see the uh, obviously the AK retained from Glotz last round. He's been able to get himself some utility per se. There are a few kits though, so it is an, an interesting spread. Um, much like you, I guess you see in some of the parks on Sunday afternoons. <laughs> but either way, Melbourne <laughs> Order now. These CZs, they can win rounds on They their can. Own. They can. And uh, they are, they're like a pocket AK, basically. If you want to put it in, in context. Save a lot of money, too. It is cheaper. It's cheaper living when you're on the CZ. But as we said, it's one of those high risk, high rewards because it has a draw time which can catch you out if you're not, uh, not ready in time for that, that frag. So. Melbourne Order are doing a good job here of just pushing the CTs back into the bomb site. They're using brute force, they're using their utility well, they're looking to trade if they need to, and Yeti Bacon Does flashed out of time. Couldn't quite connect enough bullets though. The lineup not going to be good enough. Yeti falls there. He manages to find one of the Nickheads, but Sonic too sharp, taking him down. And we are left in a 3v4 situation. Muzu with 31 HP, Sonic with 52. So it could be doable for Deceptors. 
They are going to go for the retake. They have to. It's the last round of the game if Order win it. And they are holding aggressively. Not really playing those post plants. We do have two in pit. The bomb planted in an odd position on site there, but Connie with the CZ looking to come out of library. <laughs> Molotov holding Gots for the moment. Rad's going to whiff the shot. You see Mizu and Sonic picking up the frags. Oh. Matt Sonic finds oh. one, but Sonic ending the game. Melbourne order coming out on top. Obviously, a lot of experience there in their lineup. That played uh, through for them to the very end. But I mean, in in terms of Brisbane Deceptors, they certainly gave themselves a great showing, a first showing as well for this lineup in that in that instance, up against much favoured opposition in Melbourne order. But for you, there were a few key moments there where Brisbane Deceptors obviously got. Um, Got one up on their opposition. Yeah, so it, on that, that on instance. That side, yeah. Mm. There's many, many entries coming out from the Deceptors. Unfortunately, they couldn't do the same thing. They couldn't hit their shots. They couldn't connect the bullets on the CT side. Similar to Order, but Order just did a better job on the T side. Yeah, Order were much better at finishing the job um, in that instance. As we said, though, Brisbane Deceptors, great first showing from them. Great first uh, outing at the Elite Series, but it wasn't a win. At the end of the day, you've got to win. So got for win. the Brisbane Deceptors, it's, it's very, very tough now um, to go back from after being so close. And um, yeah, they've, they've got to go back to the drawing board. So they've, they've still got a few more weeks to work through things, potentially still make finals. Um, any last words on that particular matchup? Good to watch, you know. Haven't seen an Inferno game in a while, you know, haven't casted one personally. And it was definitely interesting to see a, you know, a bit of a different sort of scenario there. It was. Now, uh, that uh, is obviously match number one, done and dusted. We've got more matches on the way. Guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon with match number two, which, of course, is going to be that Sydney derby. So uh, we're looking forward to that one. We hope you guys are as well. Well, what an incredible start to our Gfinity Elite Series here today. Huge stars. Join us after the break for more reaction and game analysis. Don't go anywhere. Murray, have you decided on a name? We're thinking Callum. <laughs> Callum Murray. Callum Murray. <laughs> Callum Murray. <laughs> Let's make it Jack. Drink it through with Dare Ice Coffee.
G'day and welcome back to the Gfinity Elite Series presented by Alienware, where CSGO is brought to you by Dare Ice Coffee and Logitech Gaming Peripherals. We have just seen the Melbourne Order beat Brisbane Deceptors 16 to 11 in our first match this afternoon. Kevin, we're looking at those sweet highlights now in front of us. Melbourne Order really dominated in the second half, didn't they? Do you think that it's obviously where they clinched it, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. And the same for the Scepters as well. In terms of the first half, they were very <laughs> dominant. Sorry, just while you're talking, we just saw that vision of that chicken copping it. That was a brutal moment, wasn't it? Unfortunately so. Everything just blew up at the end. But, I mean, just going back in terms of both sides, it was a tale of one side, unfortunately, for both teams. And the defensive side of the CT side, a lot of things for both teams to work on coming into future weeks. Yeah, yeah. So now, it, what's interesting is it, it really, I mean, you said that, it is a game of two halves, but it really is, isn't it? Because, I mean, i be honest, when I was watching the start, I was like, Brisbane have got this, but, uh, but Melbourne came back hard. Yeah, I mean... Did you call Melbourne? Uh, no, I actually said Deceptors initially on. I did. Uh, I went for the underdog, yeah, and right. so I've already got egg on my face, starting from the beginning, because <laughs> I'm the so-called... You know, expert, but yeah, I've got the right. prediction wrong. But it was very much, I think, expected at the end because order, you had the caliber of players, you had the experience on that side, mm. and you saw towards the end the players just running away. They were doing very much what the Scepters were doing, going in together as a team, getting the kills that they needed, and just not allowing the Scepters any breathing space at the end. They didn't allow the beginning. They were looking down 10 to 5. They went, that's all right, it's a new half. We'll just bring our A game and win the game from here. All right, Kev, let's get a bit more in-depth in this analysis. Which round do you think it turned and why? It was pretty much the hard that turned everything, but let's start with, uh, I guess, like, from the first round in terms position. of everything starting off. Because round number one, that was a pistol, right? If we're watching from this one minute, 30 second mark, mm -hmm. Uh, that's probably, actually, could we take it back to maybe about 140 if that's all right, 145, so bring it back maybe about 15 to 20 seconds, because this is after all the action has happened. Because... Talk us through what happened anyway, because yeah, so, I'm not sure if they can get that. Oh. Um, well, now I'm standing up. So um, <laughs> pretty on. much I uh, jumped a little bit too much ahead. So um, if we could bring it back to maybe about 140, I went maybe about 10 seconds too fast. It was a very, very fast strategy that came out from the uh, from the T side, where they came fast onto the I B bomb side. Did, this, there this we are. There. Yep. So notice this, right? The T side throw their smokes, but Sonic drops a smoke grenade right in front here. The T's have no vision, and they're confused. Their attention is completely drawn to one player, and Sonic just mows them down here. Not only does he mow them down, he also drops the kit in a prime position for the rest of the team. So even as the bomb goes down, the team is safe in the in the knowledge that they have time to come back and take. So Sonic definitely having that big impact with just a single smoke grenade coming in from the beginning. He understood the danger of allowing the T's very fast in, and he just drops the smoke grenade as soon as he sees the T's coming in. Huge. So that was the turning point for you? That was a really big round because that's order getting off to a first big start. We always talk about the pistol rounds being very, very critical for both sides, and that is how you want to start things off. If we can go to round number nine now, if that's all right, because that is where I believe it was a very, very fast strategy that came out from the Brisbane Deceptors that yes. got them their success. Because, oh no, it wasn't a fast round, sorry. This was a very slow round. If we could pause it right here and just take a look and what's going on. You can see the CT signs. This is their default 2-3 setup, but uh -huh. with 30 seconds left on the timer, 25 seconds left, that is not much time for the T side to actually get onto the bomb sites. Yeah. As a result, the CT should be pushing in for information, but because they don't have anything that's going on, the T's have been splitting on both sides. They've been making gunfire. They've been throwing their grenades and making them think that they could be on B, they could be on A, they are frozen, they are static and not moving anywhere. And as a result, in that ninth round afterwards, Brisbane Deceptors grouped up and hit the A bomb site and there are only three defenders there to me that was actually really well done by deceptors that's showing um both that's just showing how to utilize that map or selling false information and taking map control for, for yourself and that was really important so based on that you would have almost thought the deceptors were had it but again, that will be calling it too early, I suppose. That was, it was a really, really good first round, uh, mm. the first half, should I say, for Deceptors. Mm. And it was a good mixture. It was just the fast strategies, and that was a slow one where they showed their tactical depth in terms of taking that map control, keeping their composure, and then eventually executing onto a bomb site. Okay, cool. So what else do we want to have a look at? Uh, I think the final round that we'll take a look at is round number 23, if I remember correctly, because okay. that was actually... Uh, round number 19, sorry, because this was um, pretty much how Order took their entire T side. It was very, very fast. It was very dominant from the get-go. If we take a look into it from that 1 minute 40 or 1 minute 30 mark or so, it was just them straight out of the gates hunting together as a team, and they never let that go from there. It was just fast-paced action from that point. 
Right, and that's where the game was completely theirs. Pretty much. It was just, you could see the confidence coming out from their team or from the members. They were coming in together. They were trading each other out efficiently. efficiently. Raz definitely set the tone from the beginning, just hitting shot after shot. And the rest of the order players, when you see one of your players hitting shots like that, you're all joining in together. And that was really order just firing up as a unit, coming together and winning the second half from there. Huge stuff, and then it was all Order's game, obviously. Absolutely. Only a single round won on the CT side by Deceptors, and that was from Connie's round, where she was able to stay alive so long on the B-bomb site and dance around. So definitely a, st uh, a mention to that one for Connie actually playing very, very well in that CT round. All right, Kev, I think it's time to find out who you think the Logitech Play Advance MVP of the game is. Who are you calling? I'm calling Raz. Um, ultimately, Raz? yeah, so I had a, it was really difficult for me to pick out between two members, ultimately, because I was thinking maybe Sonic, mm -hmm. um, but Sonic, you know, he's been a long-time friend of mine, so I went, maybe that's a little bit more biased. I ultimately did go for Raz because on the T side, at the start where you need someone firing up, mm. he was the one to fire up, he was the one to go explosive, and like I said, it's a confidence-based based mm. game, and Raz is going to be the one that's going to be starting to get a little bit more vocal, and the rest of the players are going to follow up behind that. Well, speaking of the winning team, I think it's time to get the captain out here. Let's give him a huge round of applause, guys. The winning team captain. Give it up for Sonic as he comes to the stage. Come on. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Huge stuff out there, man. That must have felt good, yeah? Yeah, a shaky start, but luckily we were able to kind of get some momentum back on the tee side and bring it back. Yeah, yeah. W were you confident the whole time or no? Was there moments? Um, yeah, obviously the CT side, we thought we were going to be pretty confident coming on that, but... It was a bit shaky, and at that point, you kind of have to question it, but especially after that T side pissed around, it was, it was a bit shaky. It was like a 3v3 in that situation, but after we got the T side, it felt like we could dictate the pace of the game, and when we were on T side, I knew that even when they got that one round, we were going to be able to close it out no matter what, and so that was pretty confident, but yeah, it was pretty shaky on the CT side. It wasn't really what we wanted to show. Yeah, cool. Stu, I just want to quickly ask a question in terms of, because this is going back to maybe the third or fourth round in your CT half, if you remember correctly. So you've just won a critical force by round. You've taken all these AKs, you've taken the AWP forward. Uh, how did it feel losing the pistol round afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for being brutal, but... <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like basically the story of our CT side. It was poor comms, obviously we're like, people are a bit rusty, obviously first game of the day trying to get into it, so comms are pretty bad and we really gave them a lot of 1v1s on that T side and that's really the kind of where they capitalise off the CT side, we just kept getting picks after pick after pick and so yeah, it's pretty frustrating when you lose the pistol round but you know, it's really hard against the pistols in, in CSGO to kind of be able to get convincing at any eco but yeah, pretty frustrating. <laughs> well, well done mate, that was huge stuff. First game of the CSGO round and first game of the series. But we should check in with Ash backstage. She's talking to the losing captain. How are they feeling, Ash? Well, I'm guessing you guys are feeling pretty devastated losing the first game in the competition so far. Uh, where do you think that it turned around for you guys, the game? Uh, definitely a CT side. After the first three rounds, we kind of um, lost it a little bit. Like, uh, economy took a bit of a hit, and that's when you kind of start crumbling a bit on CT. So it's pretty important to keep your money on high enough to actually buy guns, so... It did seem like uh, maybe CT was your weakest point. How are you guys going to work on improving that for all of your next games coming up? Uh, I'll probably just prac a bit more. Um, it's different for every map and different team and setups, but we're trying some new things. So I think we'll probably swap up B side or not push aggressive in apps. So, yeah. Did you like Inferno? Do you like that map? Uh, Inferno is probably my favourite map. I'm really glad we didn't get trained. Um, that would have been a bit of a hit for the team. Um, but, yeah, it was good. No worries. Well, good luck for the rest of the games coming up. And thanks for chatting to me. Back to you, Luke. Thanks, Ash. Brisbane seemed to be taking it pretty well. He seems pretty level-headed, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. Yeti Bacon's been playing for a lot of years, so obviously it's going to be very disappointing for him to lose. Going, going into the second half, knowing you had the advantage, but also it's very valuable as a learning experience as well mm. because you know where you stumbled down. You notice the small errors that you guys made. Mm. Um, it is the first time that a lot of these guys have been playing together, maybe the second time, so communications aren't as tight-knit. I mean, Stuart just mentioned that communication, sometimes when you're coming in, could be running a little bit cold. You're not calling things correctly and just making small mistakes. counter Strike is a game of milliseconds. And if you make even just a tiny slip up, and we saw that happening yeah. a little bit in Deceptor CT side, it can lead to fatal errors where you do get punished for it by a very experienced lineup like Melbourne Order. And they were punished today. Brisbane were punished by the Melbourne Order. So well done, Melbourne Order. Huge first game. Join us after the break as next up we have the Sydney Derby as the Chiefs take on the Raw. My name is Azad Arani. I'm 29 years of age, coming on to 30. 